Thank you very much, Professor, uh, for that uh, chance to share our uh, research and our perspective with the colleagues and with the interest people. I'm going to talk about that circularity and safety can uh, blockchain help, but we are not going to limit ourselves with on, within only circularity, safety, and blockchain. And we are going to talk about that uh, motivation and that carbon emission. I would like to continue uh, where you like, and I would like to thank the colleagues, Zuen Chen, and again, Professor Sarkis and Professor Wang. And also we have another uh, colleague, Salim Meraj Celik. I uh, got all this information with that colleagues and we work on these uh, topics. I would like to explain that as uh, Professor Sarkis mentioned about that scope three, and here is a graph about that scope three, and there is the greenhouse gas protocol. And as you see over here, we have upstream activities, downstream activities, and reporting companies. And as you see over here, scope three includes the stakeholders, and not only limited with that, all indirect emissions that occur in value chain, both upstream and downstream. And it shows us during the supply chain activities, carbon emissions is occur from the energy consumption, from the company activities, or from the other value chain stakeholder activities. And then we have a question. If that carbon emission occur, how can we prevent that carbon emission? And then some techniques can be used or some models can be applied for uh, to minimize that carbon emission. Then we know that, and uh, it is very well known in the literature, circular economy. And as you know, that circular economy is a model which includes like reusing, repurposing, and redesign and different arts. And it has a different activities in it, which is the main goal to minimize that carbon uh, consumption and minimize that uh, resource usage. And with that help of circular economy, we'll be able to minimize that effect, that harmful effect to the environment. And then when we think about that circular economy idea, we would like to select a case. And our case was on uh, lithium ion batteries. I'd like to go on that case and I'll give some examples related to batteries and it will make it easy to understand what we are talking about that. As you see over here, it's a carbon and cobalt uh, extraction process. And if you see here, the extraction process uh, causes uh, like 10.81 kilograms carbon dioxide equation per ton carbon emission. And the refining is also here from between 1.6 to 3.3. And also we include that recycling activities and different techniques occur, cause some carbon emissions. So we are not only focusing on that the actual supply chain activities and their carbon emissions. Also, we consider circular economy activities and how they cause or what kind of uh, carbon emission they cause in that supply chain management. And of course, landfill cause a huge carbon emission. We consider all this information. And then we said that, okay, car circular economy can help to minimize that carbon emission. But the question is, is circular economy activities enough safe? Because we also think about that environmental and social side. And social side includes the employees and includes the other users. And is that enough safe or not? And when we take a look at the literature, as you see over here, around like 250 fires occurred during the lithium ion batteries activities. And then we decided to work on it and try to define. Yes, our goal is to minimize that carbon emission. Our goal is to reuse and increase that re uh, recyclability of that lithium ion batteries but also we have to consider safety. And then when we think about that safety, we ask that question, how safe is the circular economy? And here is our publications. We did that. If you're interested, you can go and find that publications. And according to that literature review and that research, we find out a big gap. And we had some research questions during that. What kind of safety and health problems are occurring during that activities? And what outcomes there with a circular economy safety events mitigation or what are the social, environmental, and economic impacts on that safety issues related to circular economy. According to that research questions, we found that a safety evaluation of end-of-life lithium ion battery management is a gap. And that's why we would like to focus on that and try to define that safety uh, evaluations and to define that problems. And after that, we focus on lithium ion battery circular supply chain. As we said that uh, traditional supply chain started from raw material supply, uh, raw material suppliers and ended up with the customers. But we believe that to minimize that carbon emission effect, we have to close the loop. And that's why we collect all these 
use lithium ion batteries and repurpose, recycle, remanufacture, or maybe redesign and rethink. And then we discuss that activities and try to define the potential safety hazards in that circular economy activities. Here's another paper we write after that gap, and it's about that safety concerns for management of end of life lithium ion batteries. And I call paper, we find uh, reuse, repair, remanufacturing, and other uh, recycle activities include couple safety issues. These are electrical, mechanical, chemical, environmental, organizational, or managerial risk, including in the safety activities and circular economy activities. That's why we would like to focus on that to define that risk and to prevent that risk. And that's trigger us, and we wrote another paper related to that safety lithium ion battery circular economies and a framework evaluation of methodology. And we use different techniques to evaluate that uh, hazards. And according to that, we found some outputs and some techniques cause the huge hazards during the circular economy activities. And this result shows us, we have to minimize that hazards. And how are we gonna minimize that? Battery technology is a important factor to mitigate safety issues, but we have to manage that with technology support. And then the about that evaluating of safety issues and that limits can result in an approach to mitigate safety issues. And government, industry, and economy should include that processes. As we mentioned at the beginning, scope three is include the value chain and whole stakeholders should be included. But when we involve that stakeholders, it's going to cause a complexity. And that complexity is related to a management problem. And we have to manage that complexity. That's why we ask that questions. And we think about that, how we solve that problems. And after that, we came up with an idea, the blockchain technology. And with the blockchain technology, we ask that questions. What kind of relationship exists between that performance measures and safety mitigation? And what kind of research we should develop and who should be responsible to that activities? And for that purpose, we define a data set. We call that one as a safety passport. And we mentioned about that in our paper and we designed that framework. As you see over here, it started from raw material supplier and ended up with a disposal and recyclers. And our goal is during the supply chain to minimize that carbon emission and to help that stakeholders to observe and uh, have a data, traceable tra transparency and safety data. And with this data, they be able to manage their all operations. When we look at that blockchain details, if you see that, here is a framework. And blockchain in architecture include that, as Professor Sarkis mentioned about that, some characteristic like distributed ledger system, crypto, uh, cryptography, smart contracts, and a, a decentralized storage system. Of course, we have a secure, immutable, transparent, and decentralized models and smart contracts help to stakeholders. And that framework includes, of course, the multi-stakeholders involvement. And we have to involve that stakeholders. And then we have to define their roles to maximize the performance of blockchain technology. And I would like to see the time, yeah. I'm going to finish really soon. And with that safety measurement, after all these things, we asked a couple another question and research questions, and we are working on that right now. How we integrate that blockchain to mitigate safety issues? And what's the roles of stakeholders in that blockchain technology to mitigate safety issues? And what's the potential gaps from the stakeholder perspective? And that's why we use the RACI matrix and define responsible, accountable, and consulted and informed stakeholders within that perspective. And when we do that, we define the blockchain technology framework and direct stakeholders and indirect stakeholders. And after that, at the end of our research, we would like to finalize, to responsibilize, uh, finalize the responsible stakeholders and find them. And after that, who is going to be responsible, actually accountable, who is going to be consultant and who is going to be informed in that framework. And the goal is that research also to integrate to the carbon emission and who is responsible from that activity is also they're going to take a responsibility about that carbon emission management and they're going to be lead that carbon emission processes. That's our main goal. We know that we have to have a lot of steps to go on, but 
the main idea is to identify the stakeholders. And when we be able to identify the stakeholders, we be able to manage that carbon emission processes and whole related safety issues within that supply chain management. Thank you very much.